All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for coming to the, uh, this, this particular lightning talk. Um, my name is Marcus Duan. I'm a solutions engineer with Acquia, and uh, this presentation is about the importance and path to growing the Drupal community uh, through marketeers. Um, so, really quick, first, uh, who here, quick show of hands, um, just to, to see how we're, we're comprised here, who would identify themselves as a, a Drupal developer? Okay, all right. How about a Drupal project manager or product owner? All right, that pretty much rounds the room out. <laughs> Does, uh, anybody, anyone identify as a marketer working on Drupal? All right, we got one. Uh, maybe two is kind of half hand there. <laughs> um, all right, so I don't think there's any, any big surprise there that, at, that, at that composition. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, but we'll start with some of my experiences at pre is in pre-sales at Acquia. Um, and so you know, we're always pitching Acquia products, but I'd say about 75, 80% of the time that we're talking to a new prospect, a new customer prospect, um, we're also pitching Drupal. Um, so we're talking about Drupal a lot, and we've got a really great talk track around Drupal. Everyone does, it's an amazing product. Uh, we've got feature, functionality, parity, or superiority to most other CMS vendors that are out there. And so what we're often uh, finding ourselves is we're, we're also competing on the fact that this is an open source technology. Um, and this is a great story that we do like to tell. With open community, there's over a million uh, Drupalists around the world. There's thousands of people that contribute to the product roadmap for Drupal on an annual basis. And compare that to some of these other CMS vendors and you, know, you may be looking at a dozen, a couple of dozen, possibly. So, uh, there's also a large partner network um, of incredibly experienced partners with amazing success stories about how our customers have won with Drupal. So it's something that we've, uh, we've gotten quite good at telling those stories, and this usually wins the IT team and technical, techni technical procurement teams as well. They really just kind of get it. But something we often hear is that the marketing team prefers another technology. And so I want to dig into this a little bit more um, because this is kind of this is kind of a crux. So, looking at the Martech landscape, you know, not that long ago, 2011, um, 13 years ago sounds like a long time, but um, it kind of doesn't seem like it. This was the Martech landscape. Lots of vendors, lots of provi providers up here, um, and so what we were seeing is more and more requirement for marketing leaders to be involved in these technology purchases, these technology decisions. Fast forward to 2023, and this is what that same slide looks like. Just an absolute explosion of vendors and services and the types of things that they're offering um, to, to our customers. And so it's easy to see how this explosion in, in marketing tech, MarTech solutions, means that there's many more marketing decision, marketing decision makers involved in the process. And what that really means is that there's going to be more requirements around marketing. And that changes the entire weighting sometimes of the technology procurement decisions. Meaning that, so maybe traditional IT requirements will have less weighting uh, in favor of exchange, in, in, in favor of some of the marketing requirements around user experience and easy to use interfaces. And so this is changing um, the, the way that organizations look at technology purchases um, in favor or maybe away from where we would traditionally have requirements around the ability for a, tech, a technical solution to be able to handle the comp complexity of a changing business over time. So just kind of keeping this in context, I'll change pace a little bit and turn to function over form. This is something for me, I've personally, it's been a bit of a personal ethos uh, for me. Um, I live my life as function over form. I've said it so many times. I don't need it to be pretty, I just need it to work. Um, this is often to the chagrin of my partner, um, who then has to bring in the, the form to my life and make things pretty and show me why that's important. And, and she does a great job of that, uh, luckily. But I realize that actually I've had the quote wrong this whole time. And so looking into this, the quotes actually form follows function. Um, and Lewis Sullivan said this, I'll explain why he's important in a minute, but uh, what he meant there is, you know, get it to function, get it to work first, and then make it pretty. Um, so Lewis Sullivan uh, is considered the father of the modern skyscraper. Um, what that means is he was the first architect um, to be able to put together 
the new construction materials and processes along with his architectural design in order to be able to build, safely build, the largest and tallest buildings that we'd ever been able to do and, and keep up, I guess. Um, and I love this comparison, this analogy with Drupal um, because Drupal really is um, complex, uh, incredibly varied solution that's able to handle enterprise level requirements from many different types, many different angles. Um, and so it's, I think this, this Drupal as a skyscraper kind of works for me even more whenever I think about the fact that one out of eight enterprises, uh, enterprise sites are also using Drupal. Um, and also the fact that this was done safely. Some of the things that Drupal does the best, handles the enterprise requirements, complex changing requirements and does so safely. One more reason that Lewis Sullivan is important is actually because of his understudy. And his understudy was a much more renowned and well-known architect by the name of Frank Lloyd Wright. Now, Frank Lloyd Wright um, actually took his mentor's quote and changed it up a little bit. He said, uh, well, shouldn't be form follows function. Form and function should be one. They should be joined. Um, and I think he helped in the evolution of architecture. And so I love the comparison of bringing Drupal as a skyscraper and to this time of evolution where the needs of the technology market are changing. We've seen that in the MarTech landscape. Um, and we're ready, we're seeing this need, of evo uh, need for Drupal and what Drupal brings to organizations needs to evolve as well. Uh, and in this context, I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm saying form, um, but I'm really referring to form in the context of the user experience, uh, the interfaces and, and making Drupal more appealing to a wider community. Um, that's really the point here. Um, so why are marketers important for the growth of Drupal? Well, first off, uh, there's around 1.3 plus million of us Drupalists. There's tens of millions of marketers. Um, so bringing more of those marketers in, it's not just to swell our ranks, um, it's also to bring in the incredible wealth of perspectives and fresh ideas and new techniques um, that are gonna help us in this evolution. We're also in this process attracting more global leaders, more Fortune 100, Fortune 500, for, Fortune 1000 companies to Drupal, increase our use, study, increase our use cases and, and, um, and, and great success stories that we have while also bringing more funding to our partner agencies, bringing more money into the entire Drupal community. So it's why they're so important, but how do we get more marketers interested in Drupal and choosing Drupal ideally? Well, there's a few ways. Um, so one here is, this is something uh, analyst reviews, Gartner and Forrester, for those of you who don't know, put analyst reviews out every year on different types of products. Acquia invests heavily in time uh, and, and financially in order to ensure that we stay in that top right-hand corner, that leader's quadrant. Because what this does is it actually brings us into deals. It brings us into RFP conversations for customers that never would have heard about Acquia or Drupal otherwise. So this is one important way that we're being able to extol the virtues and sing the praises of Drupal and what Drupal does to people who might not have ever heard it previously. Um, so I recommend you check these reports out if you haven't seen them. Another way is the Drupal Marketing Committee. Now the Drupal Marketing Committee was launched last year. Um, this is a committee of Drupal marketing executives and global marketing leaders that through this committee is solely focused on bringing awareness to Drupal. Um, increasing the ways that people outside of our Drupal community learn and find out about Drupal. And the third one is Drupal Promote. Now Drupal Promote um, is accessible to all of us here. We've got, it's on drupal.org. Um, you see the website here. There's a lot of great information on Drupal, Drupal Promote. For Drupal Pitch Deck, for those of you that need to pitch it, uh, brand book, case studies, use cases about the amazing customers that are using Drupal. Um, and additionally, what I love the most about this is the non-code contribution opportunities. So a place for everybody to be able to go, and if you want to contribute to Drupal, but you don't maybe have the skills to be a coder, or don't just want to update documentation, there's other volunteer opportunities to be able to contribute to the Drupal project. So uh, a couple things that we've identified from customers and prospects over time um, is this perception versus need concept. What's interesting about listening to Dries over the past week that we've had the chance to speak with him is he's kind of hit on everything that we've got over the next couple of slides is perceptions 
So I've been thinking about this as actually not just perception versus need, but also a bit of objection versus rebuttal, because we need to be able to promote Drupal to those outside of our community. And this is one way that we can do that. Um, so being prepared with some of these. So one of the perceptions that Drupal is hard to use. And oftentimes we'll hear this around the page layout builder, um, certain interface experiences within Drupal. We'll, we'll hear this. So need to make Drupal easier. Well, this is not new information, right? There's obviously a gap in the market because we've got a lot of people working on this exact type of issue. Open source projects, contributed modules, some proprietary companies. Aqua is up there, but no one solved it yet, right? There's no, been no secret sauce for how to get the proper page building experience in Drupal that see, feels seamless to, to everyone and works. So we've got some very specific Drupal core function and focus that's going into that. Um, so we know there's work being done there. Another perception, Drupal's learning curve is too steep. I don't think that many people in this room would agree, would disagree with me that it takes some time to, to get into Drupal and become proficient with it. So um, that's the perception. Is there is the need access to more Drupal training? There's lots of Drupal training out there already. Drupalize Me, there's certification courses, there's paid programs. We've got some, some great partners that are doing uh, lots of training for Drupal. Um, but one of the things that we've been talking about that, that was announced in the keynote is Drupal recipes is something coming. Now, helping to get Drupal sites off the ground more quickly allows us to then have new types of Drupal training opportunities. Specifically meaning you might be able to compress into a semester type of course for a university or a vocational school, the ability to start and start a Drupal course and by the end of the semester actually have something that you can produce, you can put out. Um, the goal here being, being able to bring in more youth, uh, bring in younger people into the community because we're growing the community, that's the idea. Um, and the last one here is that Drupal is hard to maintain. This is something that we hear a lot in, in our conversations. Um, but more often it's uh, because of this fear around open source, that open source is not secure. Well, one of the reasons that we're hearing from customers that Drupal is hard to maintain is because there's a lot of updates to make sure that it is secure. And we know that's not going to be a problem for long because of the automatic updates that are coming. So in an upcoming version of Drupal, we're going to have automatic updates. I'm sure most of you have heard that now because it was announced earlier on the keynote. Uh, something that wasn't said, I think, is that this will be the most secure automatic update feature for any CMS available. And that's straight from Dries. So a quick recap. Um, there are a lot of marketers, so many people out there who can help us be a better community, help us in this evolution. Many reasons to want them in our community. We just need to let them know who we are and that we can help them. And that's something for all of us to do. Um, coming back to the form and function conversation, the Drupal functionality, what we've built in that skyscraper is second to none. The ability for it to handle these complex and, and varied use cases um, is amazing. But we've spent a lot of time on that and maybe not as much time and focus on the form area of things. And we need to do that if we want to bring these marketing masses and continue to attract the younger generations. Things don't have to be beautiful, but it helps when they look easy and it's, and it's even better when they're very easy to at least start. So the challenge, we all need to be thinking, we all need to be thinking about how we can make Drupal easier to use, how we can make it more attractive, how we can make Drupal more configurable because we lose people when they have to step out of the browser and that page building or that site building experience. And we should all be thinking about how to better position Drupal with people outside of our community. We all have a voice, we can all contribute. So my one ask here, my one ask is if you are designing a project, you're building a project or a contribution right now, um, before you're done with that design, before you are ready to commit that code, please have a marketing colleague or a mentor. Take a look at this with a UX perspective, with a user experience perspe perspective to help inform that because there might be some small change that can be made in order to keep us heading down the path that we need to attract the right kinds of growth that we want in our evolution. So, and if you find, if you have problems finding those types of people, the Drupal Promote also has a Slack channel. It's not just their website. So, um, in conclusion, I'm incredibly proud to be part of the Drupal community and the Drupal project. I think it's an amazing initiative and movement. 
but I do think we have a changing technological landscape, um, and that requires continued evolution. We've seen that Drupal can evolve, um, but I think that this continued evolution is going to involve more of the community evolving as well. The keynote said, thinking of the needs of strangers or people that you haven't met yet really help move trees. Um, and I think just a slight change of that is consider the requirements of the community members that we just haven't met yet. Thank you all. Thank you.